so uh, um, this is again just talking about the binding stuff. Uh, Roy John says it's too too slow. Um, it, it, it's generated after a network is bound, um, and it's resonant DC fields and phase lock EEG rhythms yield consciousness within their nested rhythms. Remember, I mentioned this term a little bit ago. Nested rhythms. This is this is a different sort of a term. What, what does it mean? Um, well. Nesting of frequencies is literally a quantum effect in the EEG. Uh, Jordan Pop Jordanov was the head of quantum physics in the Soviet Union. Uh, he's now in Macedonia after the Soviet Union broke up. He's the head of the Macedonian Academy of Science and Art. And uh, uh, I, I learned a, a fair amount about quantum physics from Jordan. He's a brilliant guy, very, very uh, uh, nice gentleman. And um, uh, 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 this is nesting. Um, these are a spike train measured actually with electrodes down in the uh, hippocampal and septal neurons. And these are bursting in theta. Um, it, it, it occurs at about 200 milliseconds. Well, that's 5 hertz. 200 milliseconds is 5 hertz. Five times a second, you're having a little waxing and waning of, of the theta frequencies in the limbic structures. The septal hippocampal structures we talked about yesterday are generating this, this rhythm of theta. Well, here, gamma is being uh, recorded at 100 hertz. Well, this is gamma 2. Most people think of gamma as 40. Uh, 35 to 42 or thereabouts is gamma 1. Gamma 2 is much faster. Uh, uh, typically including at the upper edge either 80 or 100 hertz. So this is very fast gamma. But if you look at the gamma, gamma is occurring in little packets, little chirps, a little bit of gamma and it goes away. A little bit of gamma and it goes away. It's nested in theta. It's being modulated within the nest of theta. Now, anybody here ever measure digit span in your clients? How many numbers can they remember? Yeah, okay, well, everybody knows digit span then. How, do you know how in the EEG you can tell what someone's digit span is? How many gamma wavelets are nested in their theta? It's, this is like a register that's holding little bits of information. And how many numbers can you hold in this little nest? Um, if your theta is slightly slower or your gamma is slightly faster, you have a better digit span. You fit more eggs in the nest. But literally, that nest is only so big. So your digit span is only you know, typically up to about seven digits. And um, you, know, uh, you can do the math. Uh, um, if your theta is about six and your gamma is about 40, uh, how many are fitting in there? Well, um, you know, you're your digit span on that person wouldn't be as good as somebody whose gamma was more like 80. You know? So you, you end up with a, a, a tremendous difference in that relationship. So consciousness in this model is an emergent property spawned from the interaction between the DC field potentials, which are in the realm of the mind, and the EEG rhythms, which are in the realm of what we usually think of as the brain. When mind and brain interact with quantum nesting of rhythms, consciousness emerges. And again, DC, glial. What we're thinking of the brain here, neural. When glial and neural systems interact, consciousness is the emergent property. So uh, the, the conclusion is that consciousness isn't some weird alchemy. Uh, we literally um, uh, see consciousness as being solidly based in modern neuroscience, not some philosophical thing. Uh, literally, this is hard neuroscience at this point. Um, let's take a look at something we saw yesterday. They were looking at beta synchronization. Beta synchronizes here in a normal person. Now, they ascribed it to being here when they mapped it. Um, but it, it, it starts basically here at about 500 milliseconds. Gee, 500 milliseconds. That's like conscious awareness. <laughs> When you become consciously aware of the stimulus and respond to it here, beta synchronizes. And this is a normal person. High functioning ADD, the beta synchronizes, but it's slower. 
It took them longer to become conscious. Here, the low functioning ADD at about 900 milliseconds, they barely became conscious before their one second of time ran out uh, in the display. And what do we see with gamma? Gamma is occurring in brief bursts. One, two, three, four, five, just hits six hertz. Gamma chirps, nested in theta. This is healthy brain function with gamma coming in bursts. High functioning ADD, the bursts come one, two, three, four, five, six bursts, but they're really not intense until after the beta lights up here. So um, uh, this is a weaker gamma with the nests still there. The low functioning ADD, there's nests that are missing. You know, um, So literally conscious, less conscious, less conscious using the gamma nesting measurement of consciousness. Uh, this is a, a, a joint time frequency analysis um, using Wavelet uh, uh, from the uh, MITSAR, uh, uh, which is the amplifier, but it's WinEEG, which is the software. So, and uh, uh, this, by the way, this is 1,100 milliseconds, and the first 100 milliseconds are the, uh, the baseline, and at 100 milliseconds they've received a stimulus that they have to respond to in the CPT task which is how the, the data is derived. So normal is compared to ADD, ADHD. Uh, the GO stimulus elicits the beta, this, this synchronized beta activity. Uh, how much beta and how late it is um, it varies based on the performance. But the gamma differences are very apparent here also. Much less gamma, much less appropriate performance levels. Uh, and of particular note is the nesting of the gamma. Uh, I just received uh, three clients' data about uh, two weeks ago. Uh, they were comatose patients to start with, and two of them had 12 recordings, uh, 12 EEG recordings, and uh, one of them only had 10 uh, EEG recordings. But uh, from the time they were fully comatose to the time at the end they were walking and talking. And without knowing anything about the clinical course of treatment at all, uh, I had to define where along this series of tests did they become conscious. And three out of three, I got absolutely correct. How did I know? Well, I simply looked at the raw data, which you can actually see if you, if you, look, if you know what you're looking at, you can see it in the raw waveform. This is a good way to display it for people who can't really see wiggly lines all that well.